Hello and welcome to this month's financial markets update. Uh, well, April actually turned out to be a, quite a solid month for financial markets. We saw some good performance right across the board in terms of equities, bonds and, and property assets all moving higher over the course of the month. And the local market was actually one of the strongest um, performing markets, um, both in terms of equities um, and bonds uh, throughout April. The only downside locally, um, the resources sector really driven by weakness in the material sector was off roughly around about 2.5% over the course of the month, and this was really driven in some weakness that we saw in regards to, to base industrial metals such as copper and aluminium. But overall, uh, the performance for um, equity and bond markets and property markets was, as I said, very solid. When we look at some of the themes that are continuing to play out, um, both domestically and globally, um, and it's really quite interesting at this stage because from our perspective, um, some of those themes are clearly having a knock-on impact in regards to the performance and overall volatility that we're seeing in financial markets. And we think that's going to continue to be the case um, over the next um, weeks and months as we move forward. And potentially some of those could cause further instability in terms of financial market performance. Um, as we know, inflationary pressures continue to, to bubble along. We've certainly seen some decline in inflation over the last quarter or so, and certainly some of the more recent prints um, have clearly pointed to um, the inflation trend moving uh, downwards, but um, you know, it's still well north of where central bank targets need to be. We did see central banks, major central banks throughout the course of April actually increase cash rates. Um, where we sit here today, we, we're of the view that given the speed and the extent of the rise that we've seen in cash rates over the last 12 to 18 months, and given where inflationary expectations are starting to, to head and, and moderate in somewhat, we expect that both um, the RBA as well as the US Federal Reserve will uh, be on hold for, for an extended period in regards to cash rates. doesn't mean they've completely finished um, in terms of the, the cycle, but as I said, we do, we do expect that um, given the move that we've seen, um, that is likely to provide some uh, flexibility in regards to um, where central banks go in the near term. In Europe, we do believe the cases are, you know, for higher rates um, on a more um, consistent basis is likely given the fact that they were late to the party um, in regards to um, beginning the um, rate rising program. But as I said, certainly in the US, as well as here domestically, we think, um, uh, as I said, there'll be a, a pause in regards to, to rate hikes. And the other issue around that, and we've certainly seen that in the context of the regional banking crisis, um, in the US particularly, and obviously a number of those financial institutions um, have, have failed. And so that's obviously increased the risks associated um, with pushing rates um, higher um, with the speed that they've done over the last, um, as I said, 12 to, to 18 months. So in the context of that impact on not only the financial system, and certainly that um, can really then start to um, cause greater um, uncertainty from an economic perspective more broadly once you do start to see some cracks occurring in the financial system from our perspective. Um, again, it's notable both in terms of lending standards and also the performance of um, financial market indices. Um, they've certainly come off over the last quarter or so and when you're looking more broadly since um, central banks have started their programs in regards to increasing cash rates, um, we've certainly seen some quite material underperformance um, in the financial um, indices relative to, to their broader market peers. And so in the context of that, again, I think it's another reason why we expect that central banks around the world will, will start to, as I said, be more nuanced in regards to pushing cash rates uh, higher from here. And the final element when we're thinking about that um, more broadly at a market level is, is the US debt ceiling. So we've previously spoken about this. In our view, we didn't think it was going to be a, a significant impost in regards to the overall performance of um, financial markets. But as we move closer to um, you know, 1st of June, when, when effectively the uh, US government is likely to, to as said, not only hit the ceiling, but actually um, need to uh, look at how to push that um, higher, the risks are starting to, to expand in regards to the impact that it could have on financial markets. And just looking at this chart here, you can see that you know, clearly the, the debt ceiling over um, since the 1960s has been up roughly around about 78 times. Um, but in certain market periods, as I said, where we've got, as I said, an impasse over pushing that debt ceiling higher, it has had a negative impact in terms of financial market performance, particularly equities, as well as overall market volatility. And from our perspective, we're probably facing into um, that period at the moment in regards to 
as I said, trying to uh, push the debt ceiling higher to avoid, obviously, um, US not being able to, to, to pay its bills. So it's an interesting environment in the context of what we've seen throughout April. As I said, certainly market performance was solid, but you know there are clearly a number of issues that um, are bubbling away in the background in relation to uh, market performance, and that's obviously from our perspective in you know likely to put pressure um, on the performance of financial markets, both equity and bond markets, um, in the short to medium term. So even though the good news is that central banks are probably sitting on their hands, as I said, um, there are some knock-on impacts of that. Um, in regards to both the speed and the extent of the rate rises, and that is clearly flowing into financial market performance more broadly. And then we've obviously got these issues around, um, as I said, the debt ceiling and the ability to be able to move that higher in order for the US, as I said, to continue to pay their bills. So an interesting environment. In the backdrop of that, we haven't made any material changes to our portfolios. Uh, as I said, we've been slowly repositioning them. We'll continue to do that in regards to taking on um, a little bit more duration from a fixed income perspective. We're certainly very mindful of the impact of the moving rates and the impact in terms of the um, banking sector as it means for, for real asset exposure. And so we're very conscious about how we position those portfolios. And then from an equity standpoint, uh, as I said, we've really just been making changes within our equity configurations as opposed to outright increasing those exposures. Uh, but once we do start to see, as I said, um, cash rates starting to peak, once we do start to see that, in our view, really through the second half of this year, we believe um, there are some opportunities um, within, as I said, the uh, the growth assets, high risk assets such as equities that will be able to, um, to, to reposition across our portfolios. As always, um, if you have any queries about the portfolios, please feel free to reach out to uh, anyone on the team and we'll catch up again next month. Thanks and bye for now.